it's me, Renee. I'm back. And I'm doing something that's been going around on the Booktube notes, both on Bookstagram, probably on Booktalk, I'm not on there, but I think it's been going on there as well. And then I saw Zoe uh, from Zoe's Old Book to do this on Booktube, so I thought, you know what, I want to do it. I also saw someone else do it. I can't quite remember who. It was someone. Or did I mix up? Anyway, yeah. It's a quite fun. It's not tag precisely. It's more kind of like a challenge. Uh, it's a video concept. <laughs> you answer some questions. Okay, yeah, so, so the thing is, it's first, last, and favorites. So you pick some offers. I think usually people pick favorite offers. So it's like, I mean, favorite offers. They have so many of them. But yeah, you pick some of the favorite offers and talk about the first book you read by them, the last book you read by them read by them, and your favorite. And of course, sometimes that's going to be a video challenge, but yeah, let's go. So first, I'm going to go with Alexandra Belfler. The first book I read by her was Written in the Stars. This is also her debut book, if I'm not completely mistaken. No, yeah, pretty sure it's her debut book. I read it now three years ago. Three or two years ago, I think, something like that, yeah. And just fell in love. It's just, it's a chef's kiss of a book. It's just amazing. Honestly, I would say all of Alexander Belfler's books are amazing. Like, sometimes you read into offers that some authors, they write very good books and then amazing books. And some authors, they just write perfection. Alexandria Belfler just writes perfection. I, I never have anything to complain about her books. Never. Not like even a single small tidbit of thing. No. Her books are simple perfection. You need to check it out. She writes uh, adult romance books. This one is a sapphic romance. Though, uh, are all, well, a lot of her books uh, have bisexual characters. Not all of them. This has a sapphic and bisexual sexual. And then she also has. Yeah, two, uh, two female love female romances, and then she has two bisexual romance stories. And um, yeah, so this is the first one she wrote. Very, very good. It's kind of been described as a modern Darcy and uh, Darcy Pride and Prejudice, which I suppose, in a way, maybe, because, like, yeah, one of the characters is just very happy-go-lucky and dreamy, and the other one is more realistic, so I suppose, in a way, kind of, kind of be that, but, yeah. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, my favourite is The Fiancé Farce, which came out last year. And, yes, all Alexander Belfour's books are amazing, but this one is ultra amazing. That word, yeah, it's extra amazing. Uh, this one, I mean, beautiful cover. It takes place in the publishing industry, well, around the publishing industry. One of the main characters, uh, Sansi, owns a bookstore. So, yeah, just those very cool aspects there. There's a quite fun mystery or, like, uh, mystery slash thriller or kind of, yeah, in a way, mystery aspects. Are like, like, there's kind of, like, a going on behind the scenes to, like, who's going to, who's going to, uh, uh, inherit some stuff, so this like slightly turns around that. I like that plot point. And also, there's a, a quite amazing um, uncle because this is kind of very family family based. Both of their families are so very much in the, in the picture. And one of the fa one of the uncles, yeah, he's he's just amazing. Uh, I can't for love me remember right now his name, but yeah, he's yeah he's the best the best. And, um, yeah. The Fiancé Farce by Alexander Belfour. If you're gonna read one, one like her, well, of course, you have to read all her books, but, like, if you're gonna prioritize one book, check out this one. And then a book that last finished by Alexander Belfour was <clears throat> sorry, Truly Madly Deeply, which I just finished two, let's say two weeks ago, two hours ago on audiobook. I did have an audiobook. And yeah, also actually, also yeah, fun, 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 uh, fun uh, facts. I've done most, actually, most of Alexander Belfour's also on audiobook. So like, I have some of them physical, but uh, Lauren Sweet, which is just the audiobook, is just so so amazing. So 
yeah, also if you love audiobooks, great offer to go to go through. Uh, but yeah, truly Madeline Deeply. I just finished that one two two like about I think it was about two, two weeks ago. I don't know why I would say two weeks. Two hours ago. I loved it so so much. Though this one, I suppose I have a slight I kind of felt like didn't need that many sex scenes. Like I suppose I love this, but like this doesn't have like a ton of sex scenes and uh, I don't know. I kind of like this one because it was more kind of focused on the romance and the love story and the hugging and kissing and not the most sexy, which I don't know. I've kind of realized after a while that I, I don't mind sex scenes. Like, I don't think I ever not mind. I suppose now I'm kind of reading more with sex scenes or more spicy books than I did before. But I suppose I still kind of prefer like when it's not sex, sex, sex and some kissing. I would small for me, it's more like kiss, kiss, kiss. And some sexy. But, yeah. Anywho, yeah. But yeah, the only thing I have to complain about truly madly deeply is that the main movie I want to be in sex scenes. But other than that, I loved it so much. Also, I mean, it kind of says something because truly madly deeply is a uh, enemies to lovers romance ish. So I suppose it kind of seems weird saying that because it's a contemporary book and like, can you have? Enemy and modern life. Like, I could understand you had that, like, during Second or First World War. Like, if you were lo loving someone from the. If you were loved with the occupying force or what, what have you. But in a contemporary. But it is a kind of trope, I suppose. No, I suppose also, like, it's more like. I would say it's kind of more like they, the first time they meet, they don't get along completely. But like very soon they do get, they do go from being act heads to being nice to each other and then love blossoms. And uh, I would say though, like most of her books have like dual point of views and truly madly deeply didn't. I, I wouldn't say that I didn't like it. I mean, I prefer dual point of views, but I didn't hate it. It was just kind of, I suppose, a bit surprised by that. I don't really know why, maybe she just wanted to try something different. But yeah. Also I suppose you know I just said that I didn't have any complaints but yeah. I suppose a teeny kind of well, complaint. But like a thing to think about. Small a small thingy. So the main, one of the main characters in truly madly deeply truly is a romance author. And yet there's not really that many romance book references in the book. Maybe yeah, maybe there are some that just that just flew over my head. Maybe that happened. But yeah, I think it would be fun when more romance characters references in it. But yeah. Again, all in all, it was a great, great book. I loved it so so much. The love story, the characters, the secondary uh, plot lines, I just loved all of it so so much. It's an amazing read. <clears throat> Then let's move on. Um, let's go with that one. So then I'm gonna go with Alyssa Cole. So Alyssa Cole is famous for writing romances. She has some historical romances and then she has some uh, contemporary romances. So it's kind of contemporary with twists because it's kind of she made up some countries in Africa, but and she's kind of played play a bit around with like how with how. Uh, nobility works in uh, Britain, Britain, in Britain, Britain. <laughs> yeah, you knew what I was saying. But yeah, uh, and then she also has as well. She kind of has yeah a bit of this about that. She has a lot of stuff. Uh, I have read her contemporary romances. I enjoy them, but honestly, I would say for me, I love her historical ones more. Really, that's the ones I love. Uh, but yeah, my first with her, my first with her, my first. <clears throat> the first experience I had with Alyssa Cole was, um, uh, no, I'm back it out, just give me a moment, because she has a name, what is the book called, I'm just blanking out on it, just give me a moment, what, what, give me a moment, so the first book, uh, yeah, I suppose I don't know if it's the first book, the first book I read by her was A Princess in Fury. 
I did that one on audio, I don't have it physical, so I'm just gonna imagine how it is. It's here. If I was a better booktuber, I would insert the picture here. I'm not that smart, but yeah. Uh, that one is uh, yeah, one of those uh, adult romances, contemporary romances, where it's an uh, arranged marriage, uh, but it's like one of the characters in arranged marriage has completely forgotten about the marriage because yeah, reasons and stuff. And uh, and also the main character is uh, in STEM, which I very much enjoy. And yeah, it's just uh, yes, it's just a very nice setting in a very nice world and characters. And I yeah, I love that series. I love this one more, but I also love the princess in well, rejected royals. Yeah, it's called Reject is it called Reject? Moment. Let me double check what it's called. Reluctant Royals is the name. Yeah, because uh, that series have all like some people who are royals who don't don't really want to be, but they are because yeah, I mean you can't really choose if you're royal or not. But yeah, so that was my first uh, look into Elisa Cole. I very much enjoyed it, and then I heard that she also had historicals, and I'm like, oh, historicals, fun. So I picked up this. I also have. I also finished this whole historical read by her, so I have read trilogy. So I also have um, the second, which is called. I hope divided. So I have these two. It's actually all now older covers. Uh, and then I read uh, the last one in this trilogy on audio. I would say I prefer these two above the third one. So. Yeah. Sorry. I do also like the the pearl as well. Uh yeah, I would say my favorite on this call, I would say it's high between all of these two. Because I enjoy them both very, very much. So historical romance spy series. So there's like a fun spy aspect to it, but also romance and historicalness, and it's just a great, great blend. And then you might ask you and because the next point is also like What's my last musical read? I think my last one was one of her contemporary books. I'm just gonna double check what it's called. Um, yeah, my last one was How to Find a Princess by yeah, Alice Gold, and um, it's in the one Royal Royal series. Uh, I read that one and I also read How to Catch a Queen Queen, which came out before that. And uh, yeah, I did like How to Find a Princess, though I didn't love it. Uh, so yeah, uh, but there is a third in that um, Royal series coming out in the fall, which I am anticipating because I always enjoy those books, even though I don't absolutely love them. So yeah. Alyssa Cole, if you're into historical, you can check out her books there. If you're into modern day romances, check out those. And also lately, she's also been writing some thrillers, which I'm not really sure I'm going to pick up because I'm not really a thriller girly. Though, I suppose, never say never. But I haven't picked them up so far. I think she has two or two out right at the moment. Maybe the second book, second thriller book is coming out this year. Anyway, something like that. So, yeah, <clears throat> then we have, surprise, 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 said no one ever, Gail Carriger. Um, uh, though here I'm going to cheat, well, slightly cheat. So the first question is, which is the first book you read by her? My first book by Gail Carriger was also Solvice, which is also actually her first book she published. It wasn't on purpose, it was just how it, uh, how it was. But... <laughs> Well, I'm those people who kind of borrow books away to people, I don't really think like, I'm not like, you have to give it back to me in two weeks or whatnot. I don't mind that much. So I borrowed Solace to a friend last year, still haven't gotten it back. So I'm going to just show you instead Changeless, which is the second book in this series, and also the second book I read by her, because it's after the first book and it's a series, so yeah. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, I just love this Parasol Protected series. 
it's just, honestly, honestly, if you ever go around thinking like, oh, all books are the same, all romances are the same, all historical film fantasy are the same, there's nothing new. Pick up Gail Kelger. Pick her up. I mean, having the main character or like one of the big plots of the main main story plotline is that the main character is soulless, prenatural. She doesn't have a soul. And that's just so cool because I mean usually you have like you I mean you also have fairies and vampires, werewolves, all those kinds of things in the in the series, which I love also that this series doesn't just have vampires, but it has like everything in it. Because I feel like a lot of series just like in this world vampires exist, but not werewolves because of reasons. But here everything exists and I just love it so much. And also, yeah, she also makes up this new thing like soulless people, which is like people who, if vampires touch soulless people, they become mortal. And it's just, yeah, I just love it so, so much. And also, Alexa is just so, so amazing. And this whole world is just so, so amazing. And uh, everyone needs to check it out. People need to read it. It's just, it is amazing. And you have, like, you have a series, you have the original series here, Parasite Protectorate. Then you have a YA series. And you have a Nadu Adult series. You have novellas. I mean, there's so many se- parts in the series. So, I mean, you could, like, if you, if you, have don't have time to read a lot, pick up novellas. If you want to read YA, pick up the YA series. You can honestly I would say I would say you can pick up whatever though the Casa Protocol is the one that's latest in continu- continuity so I suppose I wouldn't say start there because you would because like if you enjoy it you would be spoiled for things happening in this book and also the other books so but yeah anyway it's Gail uh, Carragher it's just amazing. So yeah, Soulless is the first one I read read by her, which is actually now around 10 years old. Time flies. I, uh, yeah, you know what? I uh, just want to give you this uh, story. I went to the bookstore and just kind of was browsing, browsing, and I just found Soulless. I just love the cover. I think maybe, yeah, the cover's there. Isn't that just a great cover? I mean... Someone walking around in uh, foggy London with a uh, um, parasol and then that great uh, dress. And it's just also like soulless. soulless. I mean, it's just such a catchy title. Like, what does this mean? And then it was described as uh, for fans of Jane Austen, but with fantasy twists. And they're like, oh, cool. And it, yeah, it kind of is a bit like hierarch- hierarchical with different classes and whatnot. But also, and there's like class dramas. There's also. Vampires and wolves. Oh my! But really, yeah, it's just an amazing series. Uh, so yeah, I found it randomly in a bookstore and I never looked back. Always, yeah, love it so much. Uh, and then my favorite of her, I mean, she has so many books, so picking a favorite is super difficult. But, um, <laughs> and this might seem like I'm, uh, I'm just mimicking solely. I'm not. It's just randomly we have the same favorites but i'm going with reticence and gail carrier well by the same time you know all right reticence which is the last in the cost of protocol series and uh, percy is the main character in this book because i love this book's full of different characters so i suppose this series follows one character this series follows more different characters and percy i mean he's had a canon for me a lot of people though it's just had a canon but he's kind of had kind of autistic because he's just has like autistic traits with him. But also, yeah, I love his ro- romance in this book because all the characters has romance, get some romance. And also this book, because it takes place after like more or less like all the other books, it kind of ties in like it has a lot of references and hidden, hid- yeah, hidden... Uh, hidden references to lots of different stuff for all the other books and I just love that as like a general big Gail Carragher fan and also beautiful cover and um yeah yeah persistence seeing Percy fall in love was yeah quite fun and then my last book by Gail Carragher could also actually have been my favorite by her so I suppose I kind of had to choose 
will have to pay. Yeah, I'm one I'm one 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 of citizens because yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. It is Hifundra, which is a Gail's um science fiction series. She mostly writes fantasy, but she has some science fiction stories. This being one of them. It is a novella, so it is kind of it's two hundred and eight pages, so yeah, I suppose I suppose in my head that's kind of like more a book than a novella. I feel like novella is kind of under 100 pages, novella is over 100 pages, but yeah. Uh, no, novella is under and a book is over, a uh, novel is over, but anyway, the short book. And uh, so this is a romance set in space, but it's also a mystery, it's a locked room mystery. And I mean, the romance, I would say like, I very much enjoy the romance because in a lot of romances you have like lots of miscommunication or the world's against you or you can't be together because of xyz in this they very quickly get together and they communicate and it's just so lovely so you, it's just a lot of them holding hands and being gooey at each other and it's just it's just so lovely so yeah it's not the game to know each other but it's also like solving a mystery and i yeah i love this so 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 much uh, yeah, even if you don't don't love science fiction, I would still say it's like up this one because it's not that like it's not science fiction heavy heavy, and it's yeah, it's just very fun in a lot of different ways, and uh, highly recommend. Yes, then we have <clears throat> sorry, then we have Marion Curley. Uh, this might seem like small, slightly me shaming or like. Not harassing, but I suppose slightly throwing shade because she hasn't published anything in years. But yeah, don't think about that. But yeah, Marilyn Curley. Her first book by but first book by her, Old Magic. Also her first book ever. So yeah, kind of nice like I'll just I mean it wasn't purpose, but yeah, I randomly started her authorship by her first book. I originally had a Norwegian version of this one because I found it in a flea flea market in Norwegian. And then I've moved a lot of times after that, so I just I've just left it somewhere. So yeah, I bought a new cover copy recently. This is YA time travel with uh, magic, with prophecies, with seven son of seven son, and uh, it's yeah, all curses. And I just love all these aspects. All these are my best words. It's dual point of view. It is the unknown, which I also quite like how it's not a big book or series. It's one one and done. I mean, I would like more, but yeah, I also kind of like how it's the unknown. And uh, yeah, and also like this, you know, ignited my love for time travel books. And uh, yeah, I just, I love this book so, so much. It's very important to me. Someone calling, calling about, uh, calling about spamming. So I suppose I should just, should just can't delete spam numbers. I just don't need the phone. But yeah. so this is the first book, Old Magic, and then you know what? I'm going, I'm going to now go from first to last because that's what I'm going to do. And then we have the Shadow, which uh, is the fifth book. Oh, sorry, fifth book, fourth book in the Guardian um, trilogy. Guardians of the Time series. Originally, it was a series, a trilogy, and then she wrote a fourth book, like ten years after the third book. So it's like, oh, a fourth book, and yeah, it was just very, very lovely to be back in this world, and I enjoyed it very much. There was rumors about her writing, writing a fifth book, and then that's never happened. Plus, was she has also like learned about how she doesn't have the best health, so. It's because maybe this could be her last book, because this is also her last book, in case I'm not mistaken. I think she hasn't written anything after it. Yeah. And then, yeah, finding a favorite book is like, she has so many great books! Choosing a favorite... How? I ended up going with The Dark, which is the second book in the Guardians of Time series. That's not trilogy anymore. Uh, because I suppose you often talk about the the first book in the series or the last book. I mean, I did just talk about this one. I suppose uh, right now it is the last book. But yeah, this is the second book, and I also like 
Often you might have like second book syndromes where second book is not that good and whatnot. This book, it's very good. Like you have gotten gotten to know the characters, but you get to know them more because maybe the first book when you just were welcome to the world and now you're in the world. And uh, yeah, I just I love it so so much. I I should do a reread of the series soon. But yeah, if you like time travel, this is a book for you. Sorry, book series for you. No, book also. <coughs> then, last. Well, not least, we have Holy Smell. So, my first book by her was E Girl, which is also her first book, book herself. Randomly, I love the first books I've read that this offers are uh, first books. Not on purpose, that's just how it happens. You don't, it's not like you have to do that that way, but that's how it happened with me. So, Geek Girl, a Harriet, a Harriet, uh, about Harriet's manners. It's about a teen, a 12 year old, who gets uh, chosen to be a model. And she's not like really a model person at all. She just stumbles into it. And it's just kind of her living her model life, but also being in school. And Harriet's manners is quite uh, smart. She's very intelligent but she's not street smart so it's very much like a uh, uh, underdog story and uh, yeah i just love her so so much and it's getting a netflix tv series now which is coming in may we have the trailer and i uh, yeah so excited for that so that's the first book by her uh, and then we have my last read by her was the cassandra complex by holy smell well I will say by Holmes, but yeah, by Holmes, came out last year. It's a standalone, uh, timey, wimey, time travel. I would say more like time magic or slightly time travel aspect to it. It has an autistic main character, and also like the references to Greek mythology and just the story in general. And it's just amazing, amazing book. And then my favorite. It was a bit difficult to say, but I decided to go with Forever Geek, <clears throat> which is the last in the Geek Girl series. And I mean, it's just like the epic series panel. I would say, yeah, it is quite epic. I mean, quite often you might think like last books in series have fizzled out. Maybe they maybe you haven't enjoyed a few books, but you can't read because why not? But sometimes the last books are also amazing. And this book, it's just. It like it wraps it all up and it's just an amazing ending. I just I love it so so much. It's just so so good. And uh, yeah, so that is my five offers or offers first last adherents. If you haven't done this and you want to do it, I tag you or you can do it. Inspire, just feel inspired by me. And uh, I hope you have a nice reading weekend. I just got noted for a library. I have to read some books before I have to return next week. So good luck to me. And I'll see you soon. Bye.